Wolverine and Deadpool. Will they ever team up again? Today we're going to be covering Wolverine 2022 issues 14 to 24. This is going to tell the story of him trying to find his place in battle against various elements, but eventually he'll end up teaming up with Deadpool. This is the Comic Story Channel, where I take some of your favorite trade paperbacks and single issues, I break them down, giving you a synopsis of the comic book so that you know what's going on. The purpose of this is to allow you to know what to get at your local comic book store and what to add to your collection. Now let's get into Wolverine, issues 14 to 24. The Marauder set at the docks in Mandrapur, destroyed by some unknown entity. Logan walks up the gangplank, having been sent to discover who had been messing with the mutant pirate ship and who had taken the Logic Diamonds that had been gifted to them by the Shi'ar. Inside, he finds the remains of the fight. Russian thugs, burned alive with their bones crushed. He sweeps his flashlight around the room, finding holes burned through the hull. Looks like blood splatter to me, but corrosive, acidic, he thinks to himself. Madripoor is a place full of secrets, but those secrets can always be purchased with either money or pain. The harbor master flies through the door, with Logan quietly following behind him. The man crawls across the concrete as Logan pops his claws. Every ship that goes in and out of this harbor, you're in contact with. What happened to the Marauder? He demands, but the harbor master shakes his head, telling Logan that he drank too much and fell asleep. The conversation is then interrupted as the click of heels on concrete meets his ears. He's lying, of course, but it will take a softer touch to get the truth out of him, Logan. Emma says as she walks up. What are you doing here, Frost? Wolverine asks as he peers at her. The Marauder is my boat. Whoever did this is my future victim. She tells him, reaching down, touching the man's forehead, sifting through his mind for the memories of that night. She sees that the harbor master saw the shift come into the port and lower its flag to half-mast. A second, smaller ship pulled up and people boarded. A short time later, the Marauder went up in flames, with one man managing to pull himself from the waters onto the docks. The Harbormaster watched that man run off, his clothing still on fire. With this piece of information, Logan heads into the city, tracking down the one doctor who made a house call with his burn kit. The victim watches his door with fear, as he hears the voices on the other side. The doorknob turning briefly before the door is kicked in to reveal Logan and the scared doctor. I see him. I told you that he was here. Now let me go. The doctor shouts, the victim trying to reach for his gun, but it fumbles in his hand, dropping to the floor. Logan stalks across the room, reaching into his coat, pulling out the Russian flask of vodka that he found on one of the burned bodies on the Marauder. Here, maybe this will steady your hands, numb the pain. Logan says softly as he hands the flask to the man. The man takes it with a shaking hand, downing the vodka quickly. Logan smiles, holding up his hands. We can make this easy, or we can make this hard. Now if we go hard, I'll make you hurt worse. But if I'm nice, I'll get you some ointment from Krakoa. It won't make you pretty, but it might save your life. With that, the man agrees to do things the easy way, offering Logan his story. He tells him that his team was ordered to board the ship. On there, they found a large, monstrous man. They opened fire, but the bullets only drew acidic blood from the mutant. The man rushed them, and he broke their bodies easily. Anything else you can tell me about this guy? A name? A marking? Logan asks, and the victim nods, tracing a symbol in blood on the wall. A tattoo on his palm. This is the last thing I saw. He says, pointing to the symbol. Logan thanks him, heading back to Krakoa, and Sage manages to track the symbol to the Iraqi's pirate named Severe Blackmore. Logan quickly tracks the pirate to an island north of Madripoor, a place that doesn't even pretend to have a civilian culture that Madripoor does. He steps onto the island that is populated by nothing but thieves and killers, a crowd gathering watching as Blackmore takes part in a jet ski jousting match, his opponent quickly beheaded and thrown to the sharks. But that's when Logan arrives. Blackmore! He revs his engine. If I beat you in the water, you owe me a whiskey and some information. Logan bellows, and the massive mutant pirate turns a smile. And if I win, little one? Logan shakes his head, popping his claws. Ain't happening. The two charge at each other, and Logan leaves into the air, knocking the massive mutant into the water. The sharks quickly converge, but the warriors manage to fight them off, swimming to the surface. I guess we both lose. Or maybe we both win, Logan tells him, and the pair quickly retire to Blackmore's skull-bound ship. 
Right now, you're gonna tell me how you came to kill those Russians and burn the Marauder. You better hope I like your answer. And your whiskey. Or I'll tear your guts out through your throat and sink the ship. Blackmore laughs, removing his mask, revealing a noseless face. He explains that the reason he boarded that ship is the same reason he lost his nose. Solemn screwed me! So Blackmore tells Logan the tale of how he found Solemn. When he was raiding the coast of Iraqis, he found the young mutant after murdering his family. Blackmore took him captive, intending to sell the young boy as a slave, but he quickly discovered that Solemn could not be contained. The boy had a natural ability for escaping, so Blackmore began to train him in the arts of piracy. Blackmore became a silver-tongued crook, smuggler, and raider. But he would eventually betray Blackmore. When he did, he pulled out a dagger from his robe, stepping forward, slicing off Blackmore's nose and reminding him the sun wounds never heal. And then he stole the only thing I'd consider family, my freaking ship! Blackmore curses as he finishes telling the story to Logan. Logan nods, taking another sip of his whiskey. The day dawning bright outside Blackmore's ship. That's a story, all right. But tell me something, Blackmore. Solemn stole your ship, yet here we are in the belly of your ship. Logan says as he motions around. And Blackmore smiles, explaining that he got his ship back when Solemn was thrown into a pit back on Araco. Logan asks if Blackmore is going to chase after him now that Solemn's free. So Blackmore continues his tale. He explains that he tracked Solemn to the Lucky Tiger Casino in Madripoor, where he confronted him. The two fought, but Solemn was armed with a sword that could seemingly cut through anything. Blackmore had charged at his enemy, throwing him into slot machines and pressing his attack. Blackmore chased the warrior through the casino with security firing at them both, but Solemn had fled and left behind his sword, throwing it up into the air to cut down the chandelier covering his escape. Blackmore finishes the tale standing, walking behind Logan and an offering that the two work together to bring their common enemy to justice. He places a hand on Logan's shoulder, trying to convince him. But Logan smells the acid that courses through his bloodstream. I was thinking that once I gutted you for information, I might as well kill you before moving on to him. Blackmore smiles. I was thinking the same thing. Blackmore hits a switch and Logan suddenly finds himself stuck in the floor. I made some modifications to the ship when I got back to protect me from solemn magnetic floor. He then bites his hand, allowing the acidic blood to flow, splashing it onto Wolverine. Logan growls with rage, picking up a bench and throwing it at the mechanisms. The magnet shut off and Logan leaps forward, but the pirate crew has appeared and Logan must cut his way through them. Blackmore reappears as the last pirate falls with a sword in his hand. I got something for you, Wolverine. And incentive, let's call it. He says with a smile, holding up the sword that he took from Solemn after losing the man in Manjapur. The Muramasa Blade. Logan growls. Blackmore uses it to cut himself, threatening to destroy the blade with his acid blood. But Logan orders him to stop sheathing his claws. I'll kindly return the sword to you. If you do as you're told, and you bring him to me. Logan finally agrees to bring Solemn to Blackmore, taking another bottle of whiskey and stalking off the pirate ship. He returns to the summer house on the moon, looking for the sword which he keeps there. He knows that Solemn wouldn't give up his Muramasa blade that easily. Unless, Logan picks up his own blade, sighing deeply as it easily breaks in half. He's been here, in Krakoa, in my home, in my room. He stole my sword and replaced it with a decoy. One more game of sleight of hand. Logan thinks to himself as he looks out the window. He slowly returns to Krakoa, knowing that Solemn has found his way onto the island. He heads to the Green Lagoon, the drinking hole of choice for mutants on an island for mutants. He drinks his whiskey when he suddenly pauses, popping his claws. You mind if I join you? Solemn smiles from under his hood as he sits down across from Logan, drinking a glass of red wine. I'm still learning about your world, but I find myself particularly fond of the French. They're a sensual culture and seem to understand pleasure better than anyone else. He says with a smile. Logan leans across the table, threatening the mutant with his claws. Give me that sword before I flip this table and shove that bottle of red up your ass. He growls, but Solemn refuses, explaining to Logan that he needs his help taking care of Blackmore. I understand that you're already acquainted. He's obsessed with me, and really, can you blame him? What did he promise you? The Muramasa blade? You won't get it. He'll pillage Krakoa next, because Blackmore takes and he takes and he takes. Solemn says, as he offers Logan a deal. The two of them work together against Blackmore. Logan finally relents, only on one condition. 
Give me the sword, and I'll give you my word. We'll take on Blackmoor, but we'll do it my way. So, a short time later, Solemn finds himself tied to the mass of a brand new ship. Logan stands before Blackmoor with Solemn's Muramasa blade. You got what you asked for, now let's make a trade, Blackmoor. Blackmoor refuses, offering instead to cut through Solemn with his blade. Logan shifts quickly, slicing through the ropes that bind Solemn. No! He shouts, but Solemn rushes forward to the edge of the ship as Blackmore advances on Logan. Solemn jumps over the side, bidding farewell to Logan. A parting bit of advice. Remember not to stab him. He's made of nasty stuff. Solemn calls before hitting the water. Logan stands ready with his sword. Forfeit your blades or forfeit your life, Blackmore orders, and Logan ducks under an attack, leaping over another. He made a counteroffer, didn't he? Logan asks, dodging another attack, leaping away. I'm so sick of both of you. He growls at him, and Blackmore continues his assault, explaining to Wolverine that someone is searching for both the Muramasa Blades and Logan, and is willing to pay handsomely for both of them. Whatever game it is that you and Solomon are playing, I tried making sense of your rules, but now I'm done! Logan says as he picks up a heavy anchor on the ship, twirling the chain over his head and throwing it at Blackmore. The metal wraps around the large pirate's body, pinning his arms and forcing him to drop the sword. Logan roars with anger, tossing the anchor over the side. He then allows it to drag the big man into the water, sinking Blackmore to the bottom. With that fight finally done, Logan returns to the blades, retrieving them. But he knows now that he must hunt down Solemn. Logan eventually finds his way to Emma, where he decides that he's going to give her the boat. The boat with the skull on it. She declares the boat revolting, but she would like to know if there's a hold full of diamonds in it. They're still missing the gift from the Shi'ar. So Logan tells her that he was going to do her a favor. He tracks down Solemn using Black Tom's aid, and he discovers that the mutant warrior has hidden himself away in a blind spot of Krakoa, where the remains of Arako sit in the portal to Arako's new planet stays. Logan finds Solemn there with a harem of followers, and it's there that Logan confronts Solemn, but not alone. Emma approaches, shining in her diamond form. Solemn asks where's Logan going as he turns to leave, but Logan explains that no matter how many punches he throws all day, Solemn will still find a way to get around it. But you've met your match with Emma Frost. We have so much to talk about, Mr. Solemn, don't we? The Marauder, a load of logic diamonds? There's even a possible partnership in the future if you're a good pawn and do as the Queen tells you. She says as she places her hand on Solemn's cheek. Logan, meanwhile, returns to the moon, where he puts the blades back where they belong. But he thinks of something that Blackmore said about someone looking for him and the blades. He knows that she's returned. The Hand's new Hell Bride, whose husband Wolverine killed. Elsewhere in the world, the Hand ninjas gather before a hellish throne where their new bride peers outward through her undead eyes. Thoughts of Logan's death filling her mind. Jeff Bannister is a man who notices things. That's why when he noticed Dolores Ramirez, head of the ex-desk, wheeling her way out of the Sylvan Diner, he thought that there might be something that's going on. He lowered his glasses and he watched, as Logan had asked him to do since they met back in Madripoor. He knew that Dolores lived far from here, and he knew that the Sylvan Diner had shit food and coffee. He knew that something was up. He went the next day with his daughter, letting her order anything she wanted as he looked around the table, finally finding the biomechanical bug that Dolores had placed under a table. He smiled at the waitress as she came by, pocketing the strange device and reaching for a menu. Meanwhile, over on Krakoa, the mutants were enjoying a night at the Green Lagoon, where everyone was singing shockingly stereotypical and funny karaoke songs. But Logan refused to join in, instead sitting in a corner, telling Domino about the incoming attack off the coast. About the group of hostiles that wanted to take Krakoa out of the pharma game. Industry insiders looking to make some covert trouble. He explains to her that they are attacking by sea. So they're going to unleash a toxic tide, poison Krakoa, and kill off an unguessable amount of sea life? That's atomic bombs thinking. That's all kinds of messed up, she says as Logan drinks his beer. As the pair get up to leave, Logan looks at a stranger and is surprised to see Maverick finishing his own song. The mercenary mutant, who Logan helped out on a previous adventure, and he steps off the stage and walks towards them. Well, 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 what are you doing here, Maverick? Did you end up drinking the Kool-Aid after all and join Krakoa? Maverick smiles, shaking his head. I've merely been hanging out at the mutant bar. But don't worry, 
bub. We're not going to be neighbors anytime soon. Logan looks back at his old friend. How about colleagues? Got a tactical job I could use your help with, along with that submarine you own. Maverick smiles. Yeah, well, I don't work for free, so what's the pay? Meanwhile, back in Washington, Jeff has brought the biomechanical listening device to the secret CIA office that he now works at. After putting it through the computer, he is shocked by the sheer volume of conversations that it's recorded. But he is suddenly interrupted by one of his own co-workers, who taps him on the shoulder, reminding him that it is his day to pick up lunch for everyone. Jeff sighs, at times saddened by these people that have no idea how dangerous the world is outside from their comfy office jobs. He takes the money, and he heads out the door with everyone's order. Meanwhile, off the coast of Krakoa, the trio are launching from Maverick's sub, Domino, Maverick, and Wolverine. This isn't going to be easy. One wrong move and they'll dump and blow their load. Even if we save Krakoa, we'll have a death tide pouring into the Pacific. On board the ship, the mercenaries are preparing to launch their toxins into the water, but the trio of deadly mutants pulls themselves on board and they begin the fight. Dom, defuse the bomb. Maverick, stop the crane from making the drop. I'll take care of the meat. Wolverine shouts as he pops his claws, launching forward. He rips into the first merc, stabbing him through the chest as Domino and Maverick open fire and scatter. Gunfire rips across the boat, Domino moving with her luck powers, allowing her to dodge bullets and shoot the soldiers in the head. Maverick moves fast, emptying his pistol before pulling out a rocket launcher and destroying the crane controls. Luckily, Domino moves fast, pulling the bomb off the keg of poison before the whole thing drops into the water. Meanwhile, back at the CIA safe house, Jeff has returned from his lunch run, but the doors have been broken open, and he drops the food, drawing his pistol. He steps inside to find everyone dead. Lucky for him, he had taken the piece of biomechanical tech with him. He knows someone is after it. So he quickly gets to his daughter, and he heads out on the run. Later, at a nondescript hotel, Jeff's daughter asks him if he can get more candy out of the vending machine outside. He agrees, heading into the night. But as he heads to the vending machines, he drops a quarter out of his pocket. Hey, buddy, don't lose your lucky quarter. The stranger says as he reaches down and picks it up. Jeff looks at the man, not knowing that he's now looking at the face of Maverick, having successfully completed the mission with Domino and Wolverine. Maverick flips the coin in the air, making small talk as Jeff grabs more food. You go on and keep it, buddy, Jeff says as he walks away. But as he gets back to his room, he sees the hotel door has been left slightly open. Junk food dropping from his hand as he pulls his pistol and bursts through the opening, shocked to find Wolverine on the bed, watching TV with his daughter. Got your message, Logan tells him and Jeff begins to put his pistol away, but a flashbang is tossed into the room behind him. Go, get back! Wolverine shouts as he rushes forward, jumping on the grenade and taking the burst of the fire and noise. He looks up, popping his claws. You dirty shits! He growls as Maverick enters the hotel room with two of his mercs. No need to get nasty, Logan. It's just business, Maverick says with a smirk. Outside, Jeff and his daughter rush to the nearby 18-wheeler, meaning to commandeer it. Maverick draws his pistol, aiming it right at Logan. Give us the bug, and we'll be on our way. Don't it bother you in the slightest, betraying your own kind! Logan growls at him, but Maverick laughs. laughs. There's only one Maverick. The wall explodes behind him as the 18-wheeler comes crashing through the motel, throwing Maverick and his mercs to the side. I got you into this, Logan. Figure I'd better get you out. Jeff shouts from the driver's side as he fires his pistol out the window. Logan runs for the truck as Jeff pulls it back out and they speed away. I'm taking you home! Now drive like hell! Don't stop for nothing! Wolverine shouts as he pulls himself onto the roof. Maverick is already in hot pursuit in a helicopter, but Wolverine slices off a piece of the trailer, throwing it at them. He finally calls through to Sage, asking her to open up a portal for them under the upcoming bridge, ordering her to close it as soon as they're through. In a blink of an eye, the truck disappears, and Maverick's helicopter crashes into the ground. Jeff and his daughter look around in shock at the vibrant jungle island they now find themselves on, as Wolverine stops to catch his breath. This is awesome! Jeff's daughter shouts as she rushes over to a group of young mutants who ask if she wants to play basketball. Later, Jeff and Wolverine go to the forge with the Krakoan bug. He admits that he created it and that it must have been stolen by Maverick. You're so great at inventing things. You built a freaking security system. 
Logan snaps at him and Forge is about to argue when Jeff steps between them. All right, all right. Before you two go at it, we need to focus on the real enemy. The mercs have a wire on Krakoa. They're trying to kill me. How do we punch back? The agent asks. Logan nods, explaining that Maverick and his team will do anything for money. That means that he's working for someone, and I think I know who. Later, Jeff finds himself at the Sylvan Diner once more, sitting across from Deloren. He demands to know why she betrayed him, his team, and why she tried to kill his daughter. But the CIA agent doesn't know what he's talking about. The Krakoan bug is hers, but she never ordered a hit on Jeff's safe house office. You really think that I'd just kill our people? She asks him. At the counter, Logan is listening to everything that they say, and Dolores reaches for her coffee, explaining that she has an agreement with Maverick about the bugs. But I never tried to kill you, and I would never put your daughter in harm's way. Never. I swear, Jeff. It takes a moment, but Jeff finally does believe her. Then who did? That's when a gunshot sounds from across the street, ripping through the window and piercing Dolores through the shoulder. It knocks her out of her wheelchair and onto the ground, but Logan is already up and moving. He crashes through the window, rushing across the street. He uses his claws to climb onto the building, chasing the cowboy hat wearing sniper. Back over at the diner, Maverick enters, his boots crunching over the glass. Haha, <laughs> well hey there, missed you earlier. Was hoping we'd find time to catch up. He says, drawing his pistol, and Jeff tries to draw his gun, but Maverick shoots it out of his hand, demanding the Krakoan bug. Hand it over, and this is finished. Easy peasy. Meanwhile, out on the roofs, the sniper makes a leap to another rooftop, but doesn't quite make it, holding onto the ledge. I recognize your stink, Logan says, catching up to the man. Back inside the diner, Logan recognizes the shooter as a member of the Legacy House. He leans down with his claws, slashing through the man's fingers. I got a message for the merchant. Keep your filthy fingers off of Krakoa! Logan growls, but the man is already screaming as he falls to the city below. Later, Maverick has brought the listening device that was given to him by Jeff to the Legacy House. The merchant smiles at him, thanking him for all of his hard work. But when he goes to listen to the recording, hoping to find the secrets of Krakoa that he can sell, they're all shocked to merely hear Jeff and Logan singing Johnny Cash songs. The merchant holds up a hand and his men raise their guns. Maverick's mercs raise their weapons in response as Maverick is standing. Maybe we can work out some sort of deal here. Meanwhile, Jeff and Logan are sitting on a Krakoan beach, laughing and toasting over how they just pulled a fast one over Maverick. Some time passes, and Logan thinks about how all the mutants are growing soft. He knows that they've all had a hard life, and they deserve the peace and tranquility that Krakoa offers them. He also believes that you can't truly live unless you're not sure about tomorrow. He sneaks through the jungle, hunting down a Krakoan goat that he's going to need. Something's been terrorizing the coastlines of Krakoa, taking out bites of the mutants and sea creatures alike. Logan has a good idea as to what it is, but he's going to need bait. He takes out Blackmore's ship, not telling anyone where he's going. He ties the goat to a line, throwing it into the ocean, and then he drags it about 1,000 feet behind him. He sits there, waiting for whatever it is out in the waters to show up, and that's when a shark suddenly breaks the surface, but Logan notices something odd. This shark has a larger chunk taken out of its side. He turns sharply as his line goes taunt. Suddenly, everything begins to play out. He's got a bite. He rushes towards the reel, locking it in place. The whole ship suddenly lurches to the side. Logan knows that he's dangerously close to capsizing, but the line goes slack. His eyes widen as he realizes the creature's about to surface. The water splashes over the ship as a massive leviathan breaks through the water, roaring its animalistic rage. Logan jumps to the harpoon gun, firing a massive blade at the creature. It's attached to 30 gallon barrels, making it so the creature will be even more pissed because it can't dive. But the Leviathan knows where its anger comes from, breaking through the water directly beneath Logan's ship. The massive tentacles come out of its mouth, tearing through the ship of bone and wood. Logan manages to jump free, landing on a piece of driftwood that conveniently holds his spear gun and diving equipment. Night eventually falls. Logan decides to leap into the water. He knows that he must kill the beast. Beneath the darkness of the water, that beast finds him charging forward, tentacles wrapping around Logan as he fires the spear into it, but it drags him into its massive jaws. 
swallowing Wolverine whole. But Logan, he isn't done yet. He pulls the pin on a grenade, letting it float free. The explosion rips through the monster's insides, allowing Logan to rip his way out of one of its wounds. He floats towards the surface, where he sees the creature's body disappear into the inky blackness of the deep water. As morning dawns around him, Logan pulls himself out of the waters onto a Krakoan beach. No one will know the struggle that he went through. They will simply know another day without pain, all because he took it for them. Exhausted and bloody, Logan picks himself up, walking to the beach. Some time passes, and we actually leave Wolverine in Wolverine's book. We go to a different hero, someone who wants to just be accepted. Deadpool wants to be a part of Krakoa, believing that he is practically a mutant. And he's not giving up, and he parachutes towards the island. But Krakoa has air defenses, and they blast him out of the sky, letting his blood and guts fall down onto the irritated Black Tom and Logan. Deadpool at this point has tried everything. He jumped onto Cyclops' back, and he tried to piggyback in. He hid in a barrel of whiskey aboard the Marauder, only to be discovered by Blob. He dug his way in, only to be found by Wolverine. Tried chatting it up with Quentin to get let in that way, but of course that didn't work either. He tried joining X-Force by fighting Wolverine on the moon, but nothing is working. It doesn't matter that he has a beach spread of Logan on his wall and a Bud Light in his fridge. Can't think of anything that'll work. No one will let him join the Krakoan nation. But that's when we go to Krakoa, where we find Logan talking to Sage. She believes that they need to do something about the Legacy House and Dolores Ramirez, head of the X-Desk at the CIA, pointing out that she has already tried to move against the mutants in Majapur, and she placed a listening device in the Green Lagoon. And worth mentioning, she's also got my severed hand. Wolverine reminds Sage, and Sage finally sighs, agreeing to use her living computer to tap into the CIA surveillance and find Dolores. She tracks her movements and discovers that she has left the CIA with a convoy and a metal briefcase handcuffed to her bodyguard's wrist. During her drive home, she texted a message from her black phone, provided a time and a location. Sage tells Logan. He nods, turning and heading out of her room. Meanwhile, back with Deadpool, he's gone back to Blind Al. I'm revisiting all my greatest hits! He reminds her after she asks why he has returned. He whines for a few panels about how nothing he does seems to get him into the good graces of the mutants when Al finally stands and heads into a secret compartment beneath her couch. You really want to get yourself back on X-Force? She asks. I do! In a wish on a star! Write a beggy letter to Santa kind of way! Deadpool tells her. She nods, pulling out a secret file that she hands to Deadpool. Holy shit balls! Deadpool shouts as he begins to flip through it. Treat it like an audition. Put a stop to this and maybe you'll have a fighting chance of being more than a pain in the Krakoan groin. Deadpool thanks her, rushing out the door. Back at Chesapeake Bay, though, Logan finally appears with Gateway in the woods. Thanks for the lift, Gateway. Things could get real hairy real fast, so don't go anywhere. Logan tries to whisper, but the mutant is already gone. Logan sighs, moving off. He breaks through the clearing and his eyes widen in shock at the destruction all around him. Vehicles are on fire. Bodies lay scattered all around. Some of them are dressed like the X-Men, but Logan discovers that they are actually robot copies. A strange muffled noise comes from beneath the body of Cyclops. So Logan moves it to find the bloody and torn Deadpool. You found me! Yeah, now you hide and seek! The Merc says as he waves his one good hand. He struggles to his feet as Logan looks around them. What the heck happened here? Logan waves off the question. We're gonna cover that later with a flashback sequence. The only question you should be asking now is, where's the briefcase? Deadpool opens up a door to an SUV, turning back with excitement. Ha, we're finishing each other's sentences like an old married couple. That gives me warm and tinglies. Logan growls, stepping forward, slashing the briefcase off the man's arm, telling Wade, just leave me alone, Deadpool. You should really be like high-fiving me because I managed through some brilliant and tireless detective work to get to the heart of a major government conspiracy that threatens mutant kind. For that, I am certainly owed my own official green card to Krakoa! Deadpool says as the two begin to walk away. He grabs the briefcase from Logan's hands and begins to run. Of course, we can fine-tune all the details later because it's time to go! A helicopter begins to come up over the tree line and opens fire on the two of them, bullets ripping through their rapidly healing skin. Listen to your old pal Deadpool! I don't think you understand what kind of danger you're in! Deadpool shouts, and unknown to them, 
Danger watches them through her cameras. The two continue to run as the bullets rip into their flesh from above. Give it back, Wade! Logan shouts, leaping onto the Merc with a mouth, tackling him to the ground and pinning him. If you don't mind me saying so, you're as fuzzy and deliciously suffocating as a weighted blanket! Deadpool tells him, with Wolverine standing up, pulling the briefcase away from Wade. Stay out of Krakow in business. But as he looks down, prepared to leave Deadpool there, he sees that they're handcuffed together. No such luck, cowboy! You're stuck with me. Deadpool tells him, so Wolverine goes to cut through the claws, but Deadpool pulls out a pistol and shoots him in the mouth. Hold on, you got something on your face! Now stay down and do what I tell you, because baby's got a plan. The helicopter has spun around in the air, coming back around for another pass. But first, Deadpool has an exposition flashback. You see, after getting the secret file from Blind Al, he headed over to lovely Las Vegas, where he looked up his old pal, Weasel. It was while moving through Weasel's secret tunnels to his lab that Deadpool ran into Maverick. The two exchanged some pleasantries about how Maverick was stunningly handsome, and Deadpool moved into Weasel's lab. His old friend wasn't happy to see the Merc with the mouth, though, aiming a massive gun at him straight out of the early 90s. But they came to an agreement, and Deadpool was hooked up with some awesome equipment, including a brand new holographic image inducer. He explains all of this as the two of them are watching the holographic versions of themselves running across the field. The helicopter is chasing them. Do you like how I made you a tree? Because you're a stick in the mud, Deadpool says as the image around them shimmers and the two appear once more. The helicopter has already begun to fade into the distance as it's chasing the fake versions of them. I've had my fill of you, bub. Wolverine growls as he pops his claws, cutting off the briefcase. He then places the claws to Deadpool's throat, but the merc with the mouth reminds him of something. Keep in mind, I not only took out a squad of robo-X-Men, but by avoiding an all-out battle with the CIA, I totally just moved Krakoa out of a geopolitical crisis! All for you! Logan growls, pushing Deadpool to the side, demanding to know what is going on with the crazy robots in the field when he arrived. About that, Deadpool says as a shadow falls over them. He points up to the X-Men's Blackbird hovering over them. Wolverine looks up just as a replica Wolverine begins to jump out of the aircraft. At the end of the day, it's not the CIA you gotta worry about. The real danger is danger, Deadpool tells him. The Wolverines are dropped to the ground and begin to surround them. See, aren't you glad you didn't fillet me? Deadpool asks as he draws his guns. Wolverine pops his claws as the robots rush them. No more games. Explain what the hell is going on. Deadpool nods, opening fire. Of course, since this is a content-rich comic, we're going to exchange important expositions while we fight. The fight begins to rage on, and Deadpool begins his explanation. He explains that he showed up to the meeting a little late. The CIA agents opened fire on the robotic X-Men, and things just went downhill from there. And thus concludes our exposition break. Do you have any softball follow-up questions, Logan? Logan has several questions, but all for danger. Like why she's making a move against us. He asks as he stabs a replica of himself through the head. The fight continues as Logan once again points out that none of this has anything to do with Deadpool. And as the last replica falls, Logan stands over a beaten and bloodied up Deadpool. This isn't a freaking audition. He then helps Deadpool to his feet. I can do better. I'll do better. I promise. The Blackbird then lands and Danger steps out, stalking towards them. I've got your back. I, I just need a breather. Let the old healing factor kick in. Logan hands him the briefcase and prepares to fight against Danger, but Deadpool activates his teleporter belt, reaching out for Logan. Until I'm back in fighting shape, team leader Deadpool says it's time to retreat. And they both blink away instantly. But when they look around in surprise, they realize they are now in an adamantium cage. Why would you do that? I could have taken her. I could have ended this nonsense. We can't just jump from A to Z. We need a midpoint complication, Deadpool points out, and the briefcase is suddenly yanked out of his hands. And the two look up to see Maverick and Weasel, who have double-crossed them. Logan shouts in anger, slashing at the cave, but since it's made out of the same material as his claws, it does no damage. Maverick laughs, putting down the briefcase. And they both open it to see a small robot within. Well... Whatever that is, we're gonna sell the crap out of it, Weasel tells him. Logan glares through the cage as Deadpool is pacing behind him, pointing out how everyone loves an odd couple and giving exhaustive examples. Wolverine finally pops his claws, stabbing Wade through the head, dropping him to the ground. I can't think around here with all your noise. Close by, Maverick and Weasel are putting together the little robot, and they step back and are slightly surprised to see it's a child version of Danger. 
but it doesn't seem to be doing anything. As they begin to poke and prod it, it suddenly activates, hitting them all with a powerful blast that throws everyone across the room. In the cage, Wolverine is smoking from the blast. The robot opens fire on the wall, making a hole and begins to run off. Realizing that the robot was aiming at Maverick, Weasel asks, Does anyone actually like you, Maverick? Maverick nods. I sure do. Back in the cage, everything has become quiet as everyone left to chase after the wild robot, shooting holes and things. But Logan smiles. He had just seen Weasel put in the security code. Wait, are you functional? He asks, popping his claws. I got an idea. He tells him as he leans over the healing mercenary. He leans down and cuts Deadpool in half. He then picks up the upper torso by the arm. You said you wanted teamwork. I take it back. I don't want, I don't want to be a part of X-Force. Deadpool gasps, but Logan isn't listening, throwing the much smaller Deadpool, who is only a torso, through the bars. He tosses him next to the security pad, and Deadpool manages to pull himself up on the wall and pop in the code, unlocking the cage. Thanks for the help, bub. I'll take it from here. Logan says as he begins to rush out of the lab. Deadpool sadly watches him go. But teamwork, he says sadly. Outside, Maverick and Weasel are chasing the robot child through the casino, creating a path of death and destruction that is very easy for Logan to follow. Meanwhile, Deadpool is duct taping himself back together and stumbling out onto the streets of Las Vegas. Hey everybody, I'm good, I'm here. He says walking out right as Wolverine screeches around a corner in a sports car and speeds past Deadpool grabbing a hold of him, ripping him back in half again. Come on man, really? Deadpool shouts as Logan tosses him into the passenger seat and buckles him in. Turns out I could use your help after all. He points up into the sky where Maverick is still trying to bring the robot child down. Logan then grabs Deadpool, pushing half of his body against the gas pedal. Pedal to the metal! Logan growls, and the car slams into a concrete barrier, throwing Logan through the air! He slams into Maverick, knocking the Merc away, spinning around, managing to cut the head off of the robot child before falling and splashing into the fountain below. Logan begins to pull himself out of the water, and he looks back to see a black car approaching. Blind Owl rolls down the window, ordering him to get in. Logan looks into the back seat to see the two halves of Deadpool sitting in there. Blind Al drives them out to the desert where she introduces them to a group of former agents turned survivalists. She quickly explains to them that the only way to stop danger from coming after them is to give back Danger's child. Or I take her down, Logan points out. Al agrees, informing Logan that the child is in communication with Danger even now. So because of that, they know where Danger is. Where? Xavier's school for the gifted youngsters. Your old stomping ground. And with that, Deadpool and Wolverine shortly arrive at the destroyed remains of the old school. The pair move forward, but they are quickly met by a sentinel. Deadpool draws his gun as Logan pops his claws and they rush forward, avoiding the laser blast ripping apart the giant robot. They slowly begin to move through the house, searching for danger. But Deadpool stops Logan, putting his sword to the mutant's throat and demanding a favor after all of this is done. Before we go in there, I know I'm not joining X-Force, it's fine, you hate me. But I learned something when we were outside Vegas. He explains that Blind Al has terminal lung cancer. But I refuse to accept that, I need to juice her up, okay? Whatever green, gross, chunky, hippie shakes you're blending on those Krakoan petals, pump her full of it, save her. Logan stares for a moment before calmly pushing the sword away. Okay. Deadpool nods. Phew. Whew. Good talk. After defeating another group of robot X-Men, eventually they fall through the floor. And as the floor gives way with them plummeting into the darkness, Deadpool shouts, Wilhelm scream! Logan finally awakens in the darkness and looks around to see Danger holding her robot child. Candles suddenly flare up, and Logan is looking at the replica X-Men sitting at the table the child jumping up and kissing the robot Professor X on the cheek. I love you, Daddy, the robot says, and Logan cocks his head. What the hell is this, Danger? Danger steps out of the darkness, confessing to Wolverine that she is unhappy that her family left her behind here, that she spent years training her child to survive. I became abandoned, a forgotten relic, but do you know what I learned? I don't need you anymore. I don't need any of you X-Men. I built a better life without you. Great, I'll leave you to it. Wolverine says as he turns to go, but she refuses to let him leave. So Wolverine pops his claws, preparing to fight. The ceiling suddenly explodes and Deadpool drops onto the table, opening fire, taking out the various robot X-Men before pulling out a massive gun. 
And now the rest of you are in such big trouble because my on-again, off-again friend of me, Weasel, hooked me up with his uber weapon. He, whoever I use it on, is toast. Wade shouts, pulling the trigger, and burnt toast shoots out of the front of the gun. Deadpool sighs, reaching down for the toast. Freaking Weasel! He snaps. The room is suddenly cast in a bright light, and the pair realize that they are still in the danger room. The floor suddenly becomes magnetized, and Logan is slammed into it. He looks up to see danger in the control room as she explains that she has been studying them for years. Giant buzz saws appear out of the ground, slamming into them. You and your parasitic little friend are about to become a bad memory, and if any more of your friends come here, they will find the danger room alive and well, and ready to teach you one final lesson. Danger says, as the saws cut through the pair, leaving them as a fine red paste with adamantium skeletons sitting there. They both begin to heal, but now that their flesh and blood are mixed together on Logan's skeleton, they create a monster that leaps up into the control room. The monster roars at Danger, who clutches her child. Please, no, just leave my family alone, I'm begging you, she asks them. And when she looks up, the combined monster of Deadpool and Logan is gone. Outside, Deadpool and Logan have managed to separate themselves as they escape. Let's never do that again. Deadly! Time passes, and Deadpool and Al find themselves on a beach in Krakoa. Al has been cured of her cancer and has never felt better. She sips a drink as Wade finally gets up, telling her that he has to go see a man about a job. Later, in the X-Force briefing room, Sage is telling the team about a job, with the Deadpool hiding in the background. Logan finally turns, and he gives the Merc a smile. Wade, get your ass over here. We need your help. And that concludes the Wolverine issues 14 to 23, which generally seems to conclude this kind of like batch of stuff involving Maverick, but obviously he's going to be back. But I did feel like this was a good point to end it because Deadpool is officially on X-Force. If you go pick up X-Force issues at issue 30, you'll see Deadpool on the cover. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video, and I hope you're looking forward to more. Don't forget to check back every Monday and Friday as we attempt to bring you these long-form videos that cover so many issues that it should be helping you catch up. Also, if you liked all of this, please consider going to your local comic book store. Purchase the issues that you enjoyed, or get the next ones. Wolverine picks up after this on issue 25, if you want to see what happens next. And it'll be a little while before we cover it here, as we need a quite a bit more of them to be done. Thank you guys for your support, and I'll see you next time, right here.